Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. It is that time of year again where the weather turns good and I get out on anything I can ride and convince myself that I need all of them and therefore a bigger garage. This time we are riding the Husqvarna Norden 901. It is very attractive. It is an adventure bike. It's not something I've traditionally been drawn to, but did this sway me? Has it convinced me that I need one of these in my life? Yeah, of course it has. This one I have been looking forward to for a while. I am looking at adventure bikes. I don't know, they just appeal more to me now. I'm one to follow trends, what can I say? But I do like them, I can see the appeal in them. I can definitely see the appeal in this one because it is very attractive. And it is supposed to be actually quite good at off-road, although I'm not gonna get the chance to test that today, sadly. But I will give it my best to go telling you what this thing is like on the road. Now even though it is an adventure bike and it's got a big old 21 inch front and 18 inch rear and it's got loads of trail, very stable, predictable handling, it actually drops in and snaps around quite nicely. I dare say flickable, I would use the term flickable actually, but then I've always found that to be true with KTM as well. Of course KTM, sister company, I think they are a sister company, related at least, it shares so much DNA with the 890. I'll tell you the other thing I noticed straight away is the quick shifter, possibly the best quick shifter I've used. There's a bit of subtlety and nuance to using a quick shifter I find, but actually on this one you can kind of muck up your changes and the bike is very forgiving and it comes as standard. Basically pick a modern feature that most modern bikes have and throw it at this bike because it's got it. Let's start with two key points. Firstly, the looks of the bike. And although I think it's attractive, I recognize that not everybody has taste, thinks it's attractive. I'm joking, of course. It is a subjective point, but you have to at least agree that it has its own identity and stands out from the crowd somewhat. Is that enough to justify its price point though? So the second key point is that it comes in at 12,000 349 pounds, which is slightly more expensive than a lot of its competition. Not all of its competition, but the majority of other bikes in its bracket. And it wouldn't be much of a problem. I could justify that price based on the fact that it is quite high spec and high performing as far as bikes go. But I would have to ignore the existence of the KTM 890 Adventure. Now I haven't ridden the 890 Adventure, so you won't hear me talk about it a lot because I can't directly compare between the two, but would I spend an extra £350 on a bike just because it looks slightly better? Of course not. Unless the other bike in question was the 890 Adventure, because that bike is monumentally, offensively ugly. And I get it, whilst you're sat on the bike, you're not looking at it, but the rest of the world has to look at it. And it's a big f*** <laughs> you to the rest of the world that that bike even exists, because there is a performance ugly scale, and that bike is on the wrong side of that scale. You wouldn't think with a bike that performs that well, there's anything that could put you off it. Look at it. All jokes aside though, the KTM is a slightly cheaper, slightly better performing bike with a lot of the same equipment. And specifically, if you are looking to compare the two, I am told that bike feels slightly more at home off-road because it carries its weight so low in the frame because of that cow udder of a fuel tank. And again, we're back to looks. You just can't get around it. I can't overlook it. If I could, I don't want. So I'm pretty sure I've used this engine before. I've been on the KTM 890 Duke, but I remember uh, loving that engine. And I love it in this bike as well. It's really, really good. Case in point, I'll show you in a second. It absolutely launches and it's super linear. Stick the Akropovich on that as well and you have yourself a really nice engine, really nice sounding engine. Yeah, I can see this being very addictive. You just have every excuse to get out and ride this thing and ride it wherever you want. Okay, so let's get on to the jewel in the crown of the Norden 901, the thing that I like about this bike the most and the same thing that I enjoy in the KTMs that I've ridden as well. It's the engine in this bike that resonates with me. It is a parallel twin, it is 889cc and develops 105 brake horsepower at 8,000 revs and 73.5 foot-pounds of torque at 6,500. 
It's such a fun and playful engine. It's also obviously very powerful. So it makes loads of power way down in the rev range. You don't feel like it's gonna stall or that it struggles low down in the revs, which of course is useful off-road, also useful in a town when you're just pulling away from lights and things like that. And of course you can chase it up to 8,000 revs. Personally, I prefer to sit around 6,000. It gets a little bit sensitive, maybe up towards the 8,000 mark. So generally speaking, I don't leave it sat there too long. For a twin though, it is incredibly versatile and it's easy to see why they use it in so many bikes. Top speed, I believe, is around 135 miles per hour. It has six gears and it has a quick shifter and auto blipper. So you don't really need to use the clutch lever at all either. I think they call it easy shift actually, but either way it works seamlessly. Again, that's useful in any situation, but very useful off-road. Then you have the filter of rider modes. So you have a choice of street, rain or off-road. Obviously I just left mine in street since I was riding on the street. I wasn't going off-road and it wasn't raining. So I was leaving it in the most powerful, most fun option for myself. There is an optional adventure pack that you can stick on it as well, which I actually thought was just kind of a paywall that it's on the bike and they just need to unlock it. Apparently that's not the case. They do actually fit something to it. I don't know that I would personally go for that option or feel the need to necessarily. And then you have things like traction control and ABS, both of which are lean sensitive, which is useful. If you've ever seen KTM's demonstration of that technology, it works really well. And it is something I would want from a new bike. The other thing that's really useful for a modern day adventure bike for the majority of users who are gonna be churning out miles on this thing is cruise control, which of course the bike has. It also has a 19 liter tank, which will give you a range of around 250 miles. I know it's not class leading, but I'd be happy with that. That seat is so comfortable. I am loving my position right now. I could sit in this saddle all day long, and that's what I look for from this kind of bike. Yes, I want to know that it can go off-road. Other people will be able to tell you that. What I'm looking for is a bike that just does not pick up or falter at taking a long trip. Something that isn't going to give you a single thing to complain about on your adventure. And I have to say, on the surface of it, it doesn't look like I've got anything to complain about on this bike. Obviously, it is a tall bike. It's an adventure bike after all. The lowest setting for the seat, I believe, is 854 millimeters, but it is quite a wide seat. So you may want to consider that before you look at buying one of these for yourself. In the highest setting, it's 874 millimeters, which really is quite tall. You've got 220 millimeters of travel on the front, 215 millimeters of travel on the rear. It has WP Apex suspension. That is fully adjustable as well. And one of the comments I'd heard for this bike is that it dives a little bit on the front under braking. And I think I would agree with that. It is definitely softer suspension, but then it is an off-road bike. So you kind of have to expect that to a certain degree. In any case, you have radial mounted four piston calipers on the front and 320 millimeter discs. And on the rear, you have a two piston caliper and 260 millimeter disc. I've heard the brakes are a little bit on the wooden side. I have to say, they haven't felt that bad to me. What you will notice when you do yank on though, if you do have to stop abruptly, they've got good bite, but you'll find a uh, decent amount of dive on the front, obviously from that suspension. So whilst you're riding and dropping it into a corner, are really stable. When you have to uh, yank on them brakes, you will find that it does dive on the front. But and I know this road isn't that even. I'm not getting any of the kind of bumps or discomfort that I was getting on my bike on this road. You have a wheelbase of 1,513 millimeters, obviously a 21 inch wheel at the front, 18 inch at the rear, and you have a rake of 25.8 degrees and a trail of 106.9 millimeters. Also a weight of 204 kilograms without fuel. Engine, good. Suspension, good. Quick shifter, good. Husqvarna Norden 901, very good. I think in summary, my experience of the Norden 901 has taught me that firstly, I still definitely need one in my life. I had high expectations and it did live up to them actually taking it out. There are those adventure bikes that are aimed at people to ride on the road. There are those adventure bikes that are aimed at people for off-road. And this is a bike that is aimed at an even 50-50 and I think it meets that line beautifully. Still very capable off-road, but very fun on. Thank you for joining me once again for another ride and review. Stay tuned for more content like this. Subscribe if you're new and I will see you in another video very soon. Bye-bye.